don't know what this means, but sure, we'll get the event. Uh, where are we? Okay, we're, we're back to here. That's not, that's not so bad. <laughs> What's that event? I don't know. The one that's, uh... I think, is the one like the sniper rifle? Like, we can't, like, our army just sucks ass. Like, I'm sure they probably also have the organization debuff. 32, our organization is at... No, 19. Ours is just significantly worse, actually. Never mind. I guess they've been fighting longer, so they've had more time to generate uh, military experience. I guess that's one thing they have. Okay, Royalists I am, and them have ended the war. The Royalists have won. I guess you guys just train for now and generate a very small trickle of army experience. And we're getting 0.035 a day, and we need 150. Okay. We need 150, which is going to take years to do. Years. So they probably shouldn't rely on this, like, whatsoever. Okay, the Liberals have won in Brazil. Decisions available. Let's keep on reinforcing the border. We're at 85%. Like, I'm looking at this as, like, what can I actually do? Like, can I really help the the KMT in any actual way down here? I don't think so. Like, if I was France or Britain, I could probably send, like, tank divisions in, which would be probably, like, really, really good. But our infantry suck ass. Yeah, like, a lot of the Kaiserreich songs are nice. But of course, I can't really play the the music mods for obvious reasons. It'll mute the Twitch VODs and we'll also make sure that none of the videos on YouTube get monetized, which is not great. Norway joined the Third International. Tibetan Improvement Party promises Sun Yun sent thought. The Tibetan Improvement Party promises that if they are elected to invest in uh, the Khan province, uh, moreover, they shall reform the education system to allow the women to, for, for women to be educated. They pledge to allow the three principles of the people of Dr. Sun Yat-sen. In recent speeches, the Tibetan Improvement Party has had to defend all accusations that they are a front for Chinese interests in Tibet. The TIP chairman, Tibetan Kumpala, has responded by making massive donations of his wealth to calm the poor serfs to he helped emancipate. What the what does that mean? What's S-E-A-S-H-A-N? Oh, she's shanty. Oh, there's no she's shanty in this one. Oh, we actually took that province, I think. Well, we didn't. Oh, we lost it immediately. But the AI took the provinces, and that's all that matters. Um, follow you up with getting one more military factory. That would be really nice for us. Thank you very much. Also, are you new? Muslim militarism. Which means that at, until September of next year, we get a debuff against fighting my clique. Mad diplomatic interference, just like wartime. Dare the garrisons plus 40%. All that seems really bad. All that seems really bad. I think they're... I don't know what's going to happen with them. They might just end up being like internal stalemate. I mean, France or Britain never send like volunteers around here, even though I think they should. Again, like, sending aircraft or sending tank divisions in would, I think, improve their powers tremendously. The Kumakonet and East Turkestan are now at war with one another. This guy's got a very, very nice hat. And we're also taking... I guess we're taking another 10% organization debuff because our army's uh, a little bit too large. Uh, which is not nice. So that's why we need these more military factories to try to... I mean, actually, are we using factories or are we using states right now? Total population. Oh yeah, I forgot they changed it. Um, total from population four. Factories two. Uncapped total is four. Times point nine nine nine, which is not point one, so it might round down. Which is not great. Okay, we can advance up one province. I mean, what we can maybe do is try to 
Like, how many of these guys we have? We have three of you. We have three of you. We're at 150 army experience right now. I mean, that's that's nice. But if I was to add, let's say, three of you and then kind of consolidate our way down, that could work. Do we have enough guns for that? We do. It's going to cost us 15 of our military uh, power, but that's okay. Also, I didn't change the mods yet. I didn't fix those. So these two dob dubs, I need you to consolidate into one army. Thank you. That'll at least reduce our penalty a little bit. So it's not 100% horrible. It'll still be bad, but it won't be the worst on Earth. How many troops do you have? You're not 7 to 24. You're 11 to 25. So it seems like the numbers are probably about even. Which is nice. Okay, we got something else going on here. Rise of the Viads. Not a huge surprise. So yeah, you're now national populist. You'll probably start moving your way into uh, Central Asia very, very soon. Oh, so they changed the borders against... Like, in Lash Orda and Turkestan, have their borders changed? It looks like their borders are slightly different than they used to be. Maybe that's just me. Which is entirely possible. Foreign assistance. Still don't have you guys yet. Land doctrine. Urban developments. I guess I go for two aluminum. It, it's fine. And let's actually start these transport planes. We have no actual aircraft built. Okay. Maybe one day we can build aircraft, but today is not that day. We also have two research slots. Let's go for reinforcement rate plus 5%, as well as basic 1918 support weapons. happening oh no okay anyways so then available around 90 percent one more raid should get us to where we need to be is it going to break out into war oh almost absolutely certainly yes war will be declared from uh this last raid but mongolia should i believe attack from the north as well which will make our life a little bit easier yeah now we're taking a five percent penalty which is not as bad it's it, you know it's half as bad as what it was just a second ago this federation's now war people in the south the sacred union promises lamast socialism the sacred union party promises that if they are elected to bring about buddhist socialism explaining that buddhist values are socialist values they promise to land reform to collective to collectivize agriculture and to preserve the material culture of tibet they've also announced that they will seek to improve relations with the Bahari commune the tractors claim that the sacred union wishes for uh eventual subjugation of tibet to the Bahari and the commune and strongly object to foreign influence of theodore Plassi into the bet. So a little bit more support for totalism. Chief of staff, anybody who's actually, you know what? 5% attack and defense is pretty good, but max entrenchment plus 10. That, that's not bad. That's not bad, Budsock. Exactly, exactly. You guys are losing a little bit of territory. Party Commune, looks like they've sent three units over. Or maybe one, I can't really tell. But either way, they're doing pretty well for themselves. I mean, the left KNT have pushed out further than they've, uh... And they pushed into this territory. That's one That's one positive they got going for them, but that's really about it. Confrontation in Yushu! It seems our raids in Yushu have seemingly... Has finally made the Quindal government reach a breaking point. Most recent raid has left an extreme response, uh, with barricades and suppression of the population becoming common. The garrison commander, Mao Bao himself, has personally led this construction alongside quality checks, making our worries only grow further. By the time our next regiment arrived, the streets were, uh, were in anarchy as military forces, civilians, and soldiers running like it was the end times. Whoever wins this chaos will most likely retain control of the city, but one thing is certain. No matter who takes the city, this will likely result in an even bigger conflict than we had originally planned for, whether we like it or not. We should prepare for to man an all-out war if necessary. But well, we don't need to do this anymore. So they're already at enough high tension. We already have 100% control of the territory. Overall, I seem like it seems like we're doing pretty well. Okay, we just control the territory for free. Buddha smiles on Yushu. Kao Zhou Zen, the, uh, the chief of the Bujang clique, position Yushu. 
and was left with a hard choice. As he observed his men around with the fire swords in hand, he watched over Mao Bao's regiment, which was completely surrounded by Tibetan soldiers. A cold silence in the air, he took in what remained, well, what remaining peace he had before the bloodshed to come. The peace of fire, the peace of fire can bring before an eventual storm was beautiful in a situation like this, but he knew he, well, he had it too. It's time. Kai sent his men charging down to the city, interrupting the cold silence between the two sides as he and his fellow tribesmen charged the Ma garrison from behind. Making the already surrounded forces either complete chaos it was in seconds, the troops scattered in all directions with Bao himself not being found. The pursuit began with the band soldiers showing no mercy and are chasing a fleeing Yushu garrison, the young souls being cut down one by one. Kai watched it was a horror on full before Ma Bao himself came up behind the leader, cutting open his stomach before Kao could react. Bao was swiftly killed afterwards, but the loss of their leader caused the Wuqing to return to their homes when they came from Tibet while losing the loyalty of the Wuqing tribe and finally managed to cure Yushu for themselves. The eerie silence afterward, after, however, was a sign of a lead-up to a larger, even bloodier conflict. Okay, I mean, we're now at war, we've taken territory, and we got two free divisions, which I would say would be nice, but it might actually be like, really bad in this situation, I'm not too sure. Also, do not be training. This is not a time to train. Okay, Mongolia's gonna warm my clique. We love to see it. Get war propaganda. War between Hoa and the Buddhist. I've never seen any of these events before. Do they only fire, um... Maybe when you're actually Tibet, they fire? I don't know. Okay, let's start moving our troops forward uh, into enemy territory. We're at 7 out of 5. Um, I believe we'll actually soon be... Oh, no, we... Yeah, we're... Actually, it'll be 8 out of 5. Grave news, our spies discovered that the Sushan clique has been mobilizing on our shared border. That seems really bad, actually. Okay, Mongolia, thanks for the alliance. Move our troops towards the Sichuan border. I guess they want this territory, probably. Okay, move our forces through. Sichuan. Stay, stay out of this war, okay? How many troops do you guys have? 3 to 11, we're at, we are at ourselves 7. Mongolia is at 6 to 11. Okay, so we need to march forward, march forward. Seshwan has declared war. You deploy to this border immediately. Two free swimming factories, 100 politi 150 political power. I mean, that's a lot. We don't have that. The didn't dub bomb rise to defend us. Okay, we got a free unit. I mean, that's nice, but again, like, we're over our limit by probably, like, too much. Which is not going to help us in this situation. We also uh, have also got a troop immediately surrounded, which is lovely. Thanks for that. Stay on the defense. All of you are on one army right now. Yeah, see if you can at least relieve a little bit of pressure off of you. Argentina's going to war on Patagonia Workers Front. Something I don't really care about right now. Okay, yeah, redeploy strategically up towards the north. We at least are holding this area secure enough for now. You're not under attack. See if you can maybe, like, run away. Peru believe he's going to war on Paraguay. I would like, like, somebody else to join this war. I feel like that would be nice for us. Price on the Danube. I mean, we're at least winning these fights, but it's not saying too much. Now, like, I want you to fall back if you can. Where are you getting- wait, are you getting volunteers from somebody? The Ching are sending volunteers to you. 
That's incredibly rude. How, how dare you? Like, legitimately. Get out of here. We're 9 out of 5, which is what? A 20% a penalty for our army. Uh, which is absolutely freaking horrible. Like, that's so bad. So, no autocrats. We can't do any of this stuff. Urban development. Get one more military factory, please. Twenty percent penalty, huh? That's what you want to do to me? I mean, I guess it's going to go down because we lost an entire army. So I mean, that's something. Mongolia is not uh, performing the best they could otherwise be doing. Wait, was there like a thing here saying like how the war is going? No, there is not. Okay, lovely. We're now basically as spread as thin as we possibly can be, as far as I can tell. Like, without more units, we can't safely advance. Like, we're not gonna be ever able to push our way into Szechuan. Like, that's never gonna happen. V Vienna's fallen. Hungarians took Vienna. Okay, lovely. Like, it'd be nice to move our way towards the capital. I think Mongolia needs to kind of step things up at least a little bit. And you're at negative 30. Because your organization is probably, like, non-existent. It's at 19.2. I mean, our defense is really good. Because, again, we're defending in the mountains across the river. We should be able to survive. But that's really about it. We can survive. But nothing other than that. Yeah, we're at 8 out of 5, which is a 15% penalty. You hate to see it. We're going to need one more military factory. I mean, if we elect a totalist, Bahadi Kami will probably support us in a war. Is it going to crash again? No, okay. I thought for a second the game was going to crash a second time. Not seem like that's going to be the case. Okay, more of my clique forces are, are uh, moving into the territory. You become wounded. Do we have anybody else who's, like, decent? You're decent enough. Send you into the army. But, like, what do you... What can you do right now? Other than... I mean, like, how much manpower does Szechuan clique have? 400,000. Okay, I mean, that's, that's a lot. It's more than what I have. <laughs> Crash a Reich. Yeah, I don't know. It's, like, this new update, uh, 1.17, seems very unstable, and I don't know exactly why that would be. By the way, when is the election? Oh, there we go. The election of 1937. Speak of the devil. Today is a celebration for a nat national legislator. As per the Constitution, only men can vote, but a still a number uh, has come out to vote for who shall be the Sikyon in Tibet. Sikyon, the Prime Minister, is the official title of leadership of the Kashang, who will be awarded the Tibet and Kapala should the TIP remain power. The Independent Party, despite their opposition to Trimon, has kept out the ballot. The Kashang has approved this because of the YTP's leader, Sardan Dasa, had too much influence on the pre-revolutionary Tibetan military. Okay, so again, we're going to go for the Sacred Union. Sacred Union has won the election. Hopefully, this will get us backing from the Bahari Commune. Nicholas Rorick, are you, like, Russian? Yeah, you're Russian. Okay, welcome. It's a little bit strange, sure, but you know what? It's okay by me. Let's not upgrade our rifles right now. I don't think we really can have, uh... We can't really afford that. We also don't have artillery research, we don't have tanks research, and we don't have planes researched. Let's research bombers. And see if we can maybe get, like, a handful of... Okay, bombers being deployed. Wait, does anyone want to go to war with Szechuan Clique? Opening up a second front would be really nice for me. And here comes the Qing, trying to, you know, put a stop in our army. They're not uh, too happy about that. And how many troops do you guys have? 6 to 25. You're beating Mongolia, uh, which is scary as all hell. Okay, save the game. 
What if I march towards your capital? What? I mean, if you die... Here's the thing. Like, even if you die, it actually makes the rest of our army better because of more organization and more reinforcement rate. Because, I mean, you're probably... Yeah, you're not close to capitulating. Uh, will you negotiate licenses? They do like us. We don't like them. They claim our provinces? What provinces do they claim? Or do we claim their province? Oh, we claim one of their provinces. So they don't really like us. No, because we... No, we're fine. We're good. Disapproves of the government. I don't know if we really disapprove of the government, but okay. You're going to fall back, which means that you got to fall back now. Yeah, like, I don't think you're, uh... Yeah, you're not getting out of this, huh? So... We're, we're in a, a strange situation. Again, let's fall back. Garen Guard has been overthrown. And you know what? You took this city. Just stay here. For right now. You've gone my clique down to 77%. No, don't pull back. Stay where you are. At least for right now. Bush Wars broken out. Do not care about that even remotely. Yeah, go to civilian economy, please. Let's get out of splendid isolation. Like, these armies against Szechuan are going to be completely fine forever. But even then, like, we're not really killing that many troops. I guess you did take over one of our cities. Which, I mean, isn't great. Are you in the mountains? You are. Okay, so we can probably defend this city at least for a little bit. Mongolia is not performing as well as I would like them to. I would prefer to see maybe something a little bit better. Chinese military cooperation. Let's get foreign. Early mobilization for free. You know, let's do this. Let's go for the Sacred Union. Four two days, give me a little bit more uh, support, please, and thank you. Again, Szechuan, if you were just, like, to not fight me anymore, I feel like I'd have, a uh, some more opportunities to actually move into, to, into my clique. But, of course, you're going to be assholes about it and not help me at all. You got Don's answer, uh, Anna Gongxi. Look, just stop. Stop fighting us. That's really all I want. I don't know if it's going to happen. Max factories, machine tools. It's 1937 right now. We're researching basic bombers. So we can maybe build a build a, a single bomber. I feel like any amount of air superiority would probably be useful. You're technically surrounded, but at least the entrenchment is kind of overcoming that penalty. You're fighting in the mountains. You're fighting in the desert. I mean, our units are just garbage. Like, our organization's so bad because we're over our unit cap. But I don't know that there's really nothing we can actually do about that. At least as far as I can tell, maybe I'm wrong. And our defense are still, like, pretty good. So that's nice. Mac League is sending forces away from here. Szechuan, again, like, if you were just, like, the not... Like, do you want this province? I know, I understand that. But, like, stop that? That would be nice. Like, just go away. I'm begging you. Okay, Russia has annexed on Kuban. Actually, before they even attacked their way into... Central Asia, which is surprising to me.
Like, just go, stop attacking me. Let me be free. I mean, we're still defending the mountains, which is nice. But, I mean, I guess our army experience is going up a little bit. But to get up to 150, it's going to take years. Okay, replace our commanders again. Uh, go for recovery rate plus 10%. Are you in the mountains? You're in the mountains. Yeah, let's go fight this Ching soldier. We've gotten you to fall back. Okay, that's good. I mean, if the Ching weren't supporting you, it would, my life would be better. You're a World Prince of Federation. That's why you can't send us volunteers. Okay. Left Camp T still holding on against An Ching. Take a unit to the east has been finished. Revolutions in Nepal and Bhutan. Two to eight, one to three. I think we can worry about that later. We can either work with the KMT and Paharia, or we work with the Russians, but I feel like Russia's probably not gonna say yes to anything we do. For the obvious reason that I don't think Sanikov likes us very much. And that isn't too surprising. How much my part is my clique have? 150 to 250,000. We have no idea how much guns they have. Mongolia is actually trying to turn the war around in the north, which is nice. We love to see it. As long as we can, like, hold on. Okay, total some party commune. We already knew that was a thing. Teshuan, please. I mean, at least you're still holding the city. So if Mongolia can probably make their way towards... Oh, yeah, we still have... Oh, our one... Our attack modifier against uh, my clique is over, which is really nice. You're going to go away in October. Hardy is taking over some territory. Hardy, can you send me some volunteers? Assuming you're not going to go to war with the Dominion of India, like, tomorrow, it would be really nice if you could send me some, uh, some troops. By the way, what's happening in the Americas? Did the- wait. Um. Back in business. Did, uh, did the American Civil War not fire? I, I think the crash fucking broke the game, dude. The American Civil War did not fire. So the United States actually can't do, um... They can't do anything. Okay, then. Very cool. I was wondering, like, I was, like, thinking, like, we haven't seen anything about the United States. Like, what are they up to? But the game broke somehow. I don't know how. Okay, yep. Fall back to here. Yeah, Hoover's just president forever. You can't stop him. Okay, Mongolia, thank you for doing some good work. I think if you may take like, these two cities, we can maybe get the war over. The fact that I at least own um, Jining, the, definitely not how you pronounce that, will... I'm assuming... There we go. Petition for peace. Absolutely. The vision for... has been reached with Nicholas Rico's office, requesting a ceasefire between Tibet and Mike League until the national crisis over China's government is settled. The issue is appealing for those in Tibet calling to return home, including members of the cabinet. And the risk the national government of China, once recovered, will break this treaty. Jining. Okay. Well, I mean, I got basically anything I would have wanted. MacLeek. Here we go. The plan works. Didn't really go the exact way I was planning it to work. But, you know, here we are. We love to see it. Um, Backroom deals with industry. There's two military factories. No, one military factory, one civilian factory. 
150 political power. Integrate the province. I mean, you have 1.5 million manpower. You have no factories in you, though. Well, I mean, getting more core population will probably improve our max support divisions. We can have... Okay, we have one more, which is nice. Well, that's not saying too much. And I have no idea how long this war of Szechuan is going to last. Yes, all of you make your way down the words here. You're going to probably push your way up towards the north. That's not a huge surprise. With 190 political power, I guess we do want to do the backroom deals against uh, with uh, industrialists as soon as we can. I mean, I'm glad we won the war. Things, I, I will admit, we're looking a little bit uh, dicey there for a bit. Chile joined the Third International. Do we have enough troops to actually hold this entire front line? I mean, I would like to hope so. Are you moving back? You are pulling back. I don't know why. I guess I won't complain about it. Okay, you moved your way into here. Follow with you moving your way to there. No, you, you stay in Yushu. You come down to here. We'll secure this line. You'll be there in five days. We'll be there in one day, eight hours. You'll be there in two days, two hours. So we should be there first. Austria, I believe, is just in complete chaos right now. So we'll see who comes out on top in uh, in the old Austro-Hungarian Empire. What if we get an encirclement against you? Yeah, like that. I think it's pretty good. And how many troops do you guys actually have? You have no stability. You have no war support. How the hell is that possible? I don't know, but that's pretty bad for you. And how many troops do you guys actually have? 6 to 16. You're probably going over here to cover these two provinces. As you can see, this province here is empty, so let's march there. Let's collaborate with the KMT and the Hardy Commune. Of course, we're going to want to see them win their war against the Dominion of India when that actually happens. I don't know if we'll be able to send volunteers there. But we do have an interest in actually seeing that uh, war end on our, in, uh, favorably for us. I just wonder if this ends up going to be like an internal stalemate. Stay down here. Because you're going in one hour. Yes, you make your way down there. Lovely. You come down here as well. Thank you. Why are... No, no, stop, stop, stop. Why are... Wait, how did you get down there? I have no idea. You come here. Strategically redeploy to this province. I guess we'll just annex all the Szechuan clique as well, because why not? I mean, if we're... If we can. Like, do we have any claims on your territory? We do, actually. some battles here keep on marching our way down south and i guess we just move our way maybe to yan maybe that's gonna be the like usually for these kind of wars there's some sort of city you need to take for an event of fire you did take back yushu we actually pulled out of this province as well okay lovely Again, keep on fighting against you. You want to leave Yushu immediately because they kind of never want to actually stay put in the territories they take. Kind of nine days, huh? To me, that seems like a while. Uh, let's research. We have, let's see, um, machine tools followed up with a 1936 rifle. I mean, I'm assuming if it's like Yan, that's going to be an event fire. Like, hey, look, you took the city that you're wanting. 
To me, at least that makes sense. We'll definitely go up to uh, partial mobilization. Okay, now that you've been separated from the rest of the territory, move up north. Taking Shendo. It's getting you guys down to 66%. We only need to get you down actually to 50, which is not bad. When are you gone out of Yushu? Another two days. You'll be there in five days, ten hours. You'll be there in eight days. Remember the Japanese campaign when you asked for a new realistic mod? Um, yeah, wasn't that like like a like a real life mod? If that makes sense, like one that actually takes place in our timeline. Yeah, I believe I kind of remember that. World of Blaze. Okay, we can definitely check that out whenever that uh. When are you leaving? You'll be leaving in five hours. When will you be there? You'll be there in five days. Okay, so that's not gonna happen. Come down to here. One day, ten hours. You'll be there in eight days, eight hours. Okay, you go to Yushu. Come down towards here. I mean, how long? I mean, if we take this city, it actually might get their capitulation. Assuming we can get there first. We'll be there in two days, eight hours. We'll be there in three days. Yeah, because they only need to get on about 50%. We actually might just capitulate uh, the Shadon clique. Or the Szechuan clique. We'll push this event through for right now. You know, they took back the city. Very unfortunate. I was kind of hoping that we would, uh, maybe be able to get a, a sneaky thing through. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, hold back for one second. We have free civilian factories. Okay, so it means we actually built that one military factory whenever that was actually done. 40% up here, which means that's where we actually want to build our factories. Okay, like, okay. Let, honestly, um, Szechuan, there's no reason for this war to continue on at this rate. Okay, you're dead. I mean, you being dead, it's not a huge deal. You know what I mean? Like, it, it could be worse. Okay, do we have anywhere else we can really freely move into? Again, not really. We don't have enough troops for that. You're dead, and there's nothing I can do to save you. Have fun. The game, the game crashed again. <laughs> what is going on with Kaiser? Are you okay? Like today? I I don't understand. Like what's what's happening? 